Hi guys, it's another day on Aurora and we've made quite a lot of progress actually. Um, I may have gone to the boat shop and splurged a little bit again. <laughs> um, so I've been trying to find the time to film while I've been trying to do all these projects as well. But I've not found the time. So last night actually, um, I installed this uh, little Victron thing. But you don't always need that obviously because you can use Bluetooth most of the time and just connect via the phone. It's really super simple. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there on these shunts and how it's installed and everything uh, so I'm not going to redo that again and reinvent the wheel. I've made up this cable here uh, attaching to the negative there. The shunt goes through, uh, the power goes through the shunt and then um, you get a really accurate reading basically and you can do really nice uh, battery monitoring. Um, great thing is about the shunt as well is I can monitor both batteries so this is the uh, positive on the uh, engine as well and I've also connected it to the positive on the battery bank which is the main one we want to monitor here so that's really nice uh, I can monitor exactly um, what power is being drawn, uh, how long is left on the battery until I get to a certain percentage uh, and then history as well so as you know this boat is on charter so I can uh, actually look into the history and see whether the charterer has taken the batteries down way too low or not um, uh, in the past. But back to the solar installation so um, again over the last two nights I've been very busy uh, I've made up a little panel. Um, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. Maybe I should paint it white. I can do that later though. I just need to pull it off and um, it's only attached via Velcro onto the side of the hull. I'm going to see how that goes, uh, whether it's going to hold it or not. If not, I'm going to have to uh, put some Sikaflex on or something and just bond it to the side of the hull. But I'd like to be able to remove this panel um, easily as well. So here we go. We've got the Victron 100-200 uh, in there, uh, 120 sorry, so that's uh, 100 volts or 20 amps maximum on that and that's the smart um, charge controller so it's also on Bluetooth. I don't know whether the shunt and the um, charge controller can pair in some way but I don't think it's entirely necessary. So yeah we're going to have our solar panels coming in uh, here going into these uh, bus bars here um, and then going through a fuse uh, into the charge controller out of the charge controller into a switch here oh, it's really bad light sorry guys into the switch there um, and then coming out through another fuse here and then down to the batteries um, via these two cables so that should work out just nicely I think. I've made the board a bit longer there for future expansion so I might want to put like a Raspberry Pi up there and some other things and gadgets and whatever so yeah just attach this with velcro and it seems really solid at the moment um, before I was trying this uh, 3M um, dual lock actually it's really good really strong but as long as you you need a perfectly flat surface for it to be able to work so it can push together Velcro's uh, good for that situation where you've got slightly, maybe a slightly curved surface or a slightly uneven surface and you just want it to stick easily. The next part of the installation is actually to start putting the panels on because we've got the cables run now. As I said before, uh, we've got a cable running from here uh, and then two running from here because one of the panels is going to be up here. I've got to find a way through to that. Uh, I've got some ideas but we'll see what happens. So all the cables are running down through here, down the side and uh, down to there. So guys, I've undone basically most of the screws on the spray hood rail. I didn't show you that because it's just undoing screws really, but I've got to put some sealant in these next time I uh, put, the, um, put the screws back in because these ones actually go into the coach roof. These ones are just going through to the um, sliding hatch there, so yeah, not so important, but might just silicon all of them anyway. But I'm just going to try and get this off now, preferably without scratching it. it shouldn't be too much of a problem once I get over this ridge. There we go. Now. 
There is one good thing about this, is I've got plenty of room here for a bit of wire. So if we take the cable from the other side of the uh, coach roof, back here, maybe across and through here. I haven't fully decided yet. I'm just going to take a look around and see what feels right. Not rush into any decisions. I've learned that the hard way a few times. <laughs> Okay guys, um, I think I've made my decision now. Basically, I'm just gonna go through this here. The hatch comes up and over here and actually seals on top of here as well. So I can just go straight through here and then um, uh, possibly glue the cable up onto the top of the uh, hatch garage. And yeah, it should be able to go through. Um, I've also, uh, I tried to find some grommets earlier but I wasn't really very successful, right? So. I was in a hardware store and I found a, a little hack actually. Um, I found these uh, furniture feet and you see that little hole in the middle there. Uh, it's perfect for getting the cable through. Uh, and then once I've done that, I can just glue these on here like this and then feed the cable straight through the middle of these. Um, and then once the hatch garage is on and then I can, then I can just take take the tension up on the other side without any messy uh, silicon or anything like that and it should be able to seal very nicely I mean there's not a lot of water that goes on there because this is all sealed across there anyway in this hatch garage there's actually uh, a little bit of wood inside so yeah I need to seal that up uh, I might just cheat a little bit and use some seeker flex there uh, just around the around the edge but I learned earlier the hard way is yeah when you're messing around with these always make sure you tape one of them up because they will start uh, sparking together sounds a bit obvious but yeah just didn't think about it and I was messing around and then well, I'll check the voltage on the panel and they're all right. I only just touched them uh, briefly, but just be careful with these guys, especially when the sun's out, you know. When I'm going to connect these, I'm going to actually cover the solar panel. So uh, there's no charge there, no voltage. really nice happy with that now the next stage is just to fill the hole um, I've had a look to see what I've got and everything and the only really good thing I can find is uh, butyl tape so I'm gonna um, where this uh, where this hole is I'm gonna put butyl tape all around the outside in there and then I'm gonna try and fill it as well a bit with butyl tape both from, from both sides I know I should epoxy it and um, I'll probably do it the next time they're off, that's for sure, but I've just got to seal it for now, now that I don't have the epoxy with me. And I want to get this project finished before we go out tomorrow. So, that's the best I can do. Um, the main concerns while, that I have while doing this uh, solar panel project is actually the, it, for the future, you know. Um, it's easy for me, if I really wanted to, I could just seek a flex the whole panel on, whatever, cross cross underneath, go around all the edges, all with seek a flex. The problem is, in like five or six years, or, or whatever, ten years, that when it's next got to come off, I'm going to have a right nightmare removing this. Now, it's not too bad on the... Um, uh, on the flat surfaces like this because you can you can uh, use a knife wire all the way down and you you'll cut the seeker flex but still that's going to be a nightmare to get off to get the old stuff off especially on the uh, on the deck where it's got a rough surface on so I'm doing everything I can to make it easy the next time we uh, the next time we take these off so but let's get this butyl tape in get this on, get this wire in, and then I can start to seek flexing this on a bit on the edges. Yeah guys, this would be much easier if I had my workbench with me. I could just put it on the pontoon and work on it there, but uh, 
yeah it is what it is now i'm going to use these things to just secure the cable on the underneath here okay guys next step i've uh, cleaned up all the edges under here so i'm just going to put seeker flex under here basically under the corners and then uh, put a little splodge in the middle as well if i can The problem that you get with this seeker flex is that you can end up with it everywhere if you're not careful. So you just need to use a few rags, make sure you try and keep things clean, especially if you get it on your hands and it goes all over the boat if you're not if you're not vigilant in where you put in your hands. So I just every corner I'm just changing rag. Okay, well there it is. Seeker flexed on put the panel on and then start running the cables inside. Now it's time to drill holes. I've already drilled the pilot holes actually, but uh, just gotta get the slightly bigger holes in so that the, so that the uh, wires can fit in. So I've got the fish wire actually through here. Uh, you can see it moving down in the bottom there. So that makes it nice and easy to now connect the wires as I put them through. Um, for the for the little grommets I've got, I think I'm just going to put a dab a, a little bit of super glue around the outside just to secure them, and then um, yeah, that should be enough actually. I don't want to use anything that's going to take ages to cure because it needs to stick and it needs to stay there straight away. It can't move around as I'm pulling the wire through because I can't hold it as the uh, cover is on. So this is the setup underneath what I've done. Yeah. So yeah, just crimp those wires there because it's better to get those wires through than the other wires. Um, So it's time to get this uh, hatch on now, get it all wired up. Yeah, this bit you can't see, it's all underneath, so I'm gonna get it wired up and see where we end up tonight. Hi guys, welcome to the present day now and welcome to my little editing studio I've got going on here. Um, winter is approaching, you can probably tell that this video was filmed uh, around four months ago. So I'll just give you the little update on the seeker flex method I used. Now, seeker flexing on the corners was a really good move actually, it worked really well. The only problem was, um, in the heat actually, the uh, solar panel expanded slightly. Um, and because it wasn't bonded uh, anywhere in the middle there, um, th there was bumps started to appear in the solar panel there. Uh, so it's not a, not a mega problem, um, but I just wanted it to be nice and flat and nice and uh, uh, sealed basically. Because what happens was when the bumps appeared, uh, water started to get uh, underneath the solar panel and every time you stepped on it, a bit of water would squidge out and everything. So. This weekend, actually, I'm planning to uh, go down to the boat. Um, I'm working on the pad eyes at the moment, just to let you know, and um, the anchormatic solution is almost done, just to give you a quick update on that and a sneak peek, spoiler alert. When I go down to uh, re-bed the solar panel, I'm gonna film that this weekend, and I'm just gonna um, cut the edges on one side, 
put a little seeker flex on the middle, rebond the edges, and I'm actually going to seeker flex all the way around the solar panel just to seal that up properly. I think that will be a better solution, and it still won't be that difficult to uh, remove now. I've had a little bit more experience with seeker flex, and it's actually a really good product for this. It's, it's easy to remove um, to a point. You need a knife and everything, but uh, yeah, it's a lot easier than some of the other solutions out there I've seen. So I'll give you a little update on that in part three of the solar panel installation when I install the 255 watt panels uh, next time and I'll rebed the middle one so you can see that happen. Anyway, back to the video. <laughs> Just doing the final crimp now on the solar panel installation, or the first solar panel that's directly above here now, the 78 watt one. I bought it from um, Sunbeam. Uh, they seem to be well rated and they're an upcoming company in Sweden. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good company. So just connecting the last uh, positive wire now. And then I can put the fuse in in a second. It's typical, isn't it? When you're filming something, it always unravels on you and doesn't go quite right. Twist. There we go. Get in. Crimp. Crimp again. Okay. Great. Now the final thing to do is just check whether we have live connection down there. <laughs> right guys, I've just checked the load. Uh, there's no load on the buses at the moment. So it's really important before you connect the solar panels to actually get rid of all the load, cover the solar panel with something, um, connect the solar panels and then connect all the fuses, turn it on and whatever, and then take the um, uh, whatever you've got over the solar panel off. And then, you know, the solar uh, controller can then take the load. So I'm just going to put the fuse in now and then I'm just going to go upstairs now and uncover it and uh, let's see what happens. And see, because if we look at the app, oh, that's the smart control, that's the shunt, what I connected. So the smart solar is here. Fingers crossed. Look at that. Got solar voltage of 15 volts and 0.5 amps. So it's not very much at the moment, but uh, yeah, the sun's very low in the sky and it's a little bit shaded as well, but at least we know it's connected. And it's charging with 0.5 amps. Great. It was a bit of a mission and overall, I think just to install that one panel and get the cables run, it, it takes a lot of time. Just to let you know, that's probably why uh, a lot of companies are charging a bit of money to install these solar panels uh, in a neat way because they know it just it takes time. That's just the way it is. Right, well, that was part two of the installation and that was just the first 78 watt panel installed on the middle of the coach roof now. Uh, this weekend, like I've said before, I will be going down to the boat and installing the two 55 watt panels either side and rebedding that 78 watt solar panel. So stay tuned for part three of the installation and the final part of the installation and I'll just give a, a good overview of the whole system as well maybe um, just to just to run through that again and, and uh, how it's all working. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Bye now.